It has been a rough year for Meta. That might be an understatement. Its Facebook stock has dropped more than 20 percent. Shares of Meta plummeting this morning, down over 20 percent. Right. Well, the stock has already lost 70 percent. They their lowest level since March of 2020. What is Smart doing? From peak to trough, Meta lost 75 percent, or over 700 billion dollars in value. For perspective, only five companies in the world have ever had a market cap of over $700 billion, and Meta lost that much in just over a year. You might have positions in Meta that are deep in the red, and you're wondering if you should sell because Meta is done, while others of you are looking at Meta's depressed stock price and thinking, could this actually be a pretty good investment? Well, today, we're going to help answer those questions. Hello, friends. My name is Kobe Hunter, and I love answering questions about business and personal finance. So today, we're going to understand why Meta stock price cratered and what that means to the future of Meta as a company, and by extension, if Meta is a good company to invest in. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in. To predict the future with any level of accuracy, it's essential to understand the past. And in the last 12 months, Meta's market cap has suffered a steep decline since its peak of about $1.1 trillion to a low of $240 billion. Even though Meta's stock has rebounded to around $460 billion as of filming this video, it's still down more than 50% from its peak. What caused this massive decline, you ask? It's not just that we're in a bear market right now, and it's not just that Meta's revenue is cratered compared to previous years. It hasn't, by the way. Even after Apple reduced Meta's ability to track iPhone users and cost Meta $10 billion per year in lost revenue, Meta still made $116 billion, which is only about a 1% decline from its 2021 numbers of $117 billion. So why are all the investors freaking out? The main reason for Meta's declining stock value is its investment in building the metaverse, which has led to billions of dollars being spent with nothing to show in terms of profits. The main issue is Wall Street's concern over Meta's ambitious investments in reality labs. Despite market skepticism, Mark Zuckerberg is convinced at the potential of the metaverse and sees a huge opportunity for Meta when the metaverse eventually becomes mainstream. As you can see, Meta's increased investment in reality labs has steadily eroded Meta's operating margin, falling from 46% in quarter four of 2020 to 20% by quarter three of 2022. Investors do not like seeing these numbers falling. They do not like that Meta has burned $36 billion over the last three years in Reality Labs. Many investors see these investments as a waste because they don't view the metaverse as having any commercial value in the near future. The sheer amount of money Meta is lighting on fire is basically unprecedented. Few companies even have this amount of capital to waste, but Meta does thanks to its ridiculous amount of advertising revenue it generates from Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. For perspective, Meta's $116 billion in revenue dwarfs companies like Visa, Tesla, TSMC, and NVIDIA. But what does this all mean? Well, Meta loses about $10 billion per year investing in the metaverse strategy. This includes investments in augmented reality, virtual reality, immersive 3D, and Horizon World. These investments in Reality Labs will remain unprofitable for the foreseeable future. And despite shareholder pushback, obviously shareholders would much rather than be repurchasing shares or investing in their tried and true business model, Meta can afford to invest in this unproven technology. Meta isn't scraping for cash despite what the recent layoffs might make you think. Even though its net income is down by 40%, net income is still $23 billion, and Meta has an additional $16.6 .6 billion in cash or cash equivalents on hand. So essentially, investors are freaking out because they think that Meta has lost their way and are afraid that this side project of the metaverse could be the company's undoing. But is that actually the case? Well, it depends on who you ask. Right now, the metaverse, virtual reality, and augmented reality are buzzwords that people throw around to make their nonsensical inventions look cool. But despite their reputation being tattered by crypto bros, there are some really interesting use cases for virtual reality and augmented reality. I personally don't think we'll ever be spending our entire workdays in VR headsets. I believe humans intrinsically need light more than that. But imagine if Facebook could make augmented reality glasses that put Google Glass to shame. A heads up display for your life that could use facial recognition so you never forget another person's name and so much more. Sure, this sounds like science fiction, but people thought the same thing when they saw the first iPhone, saw Tesla's self-drive, or used ChatGPT for the first time. Innovation always demands significant research and development investments before profits can be earned. And no other company is investing in virtual and augmented reality to the same level that Meta is. Let's say that they do come up with a viable Metaverse project. Well, today the Metaverse market is valued at about $40 billion. But most reports estimate that it will be valued between $900 billion and $1.5 trillion by 2030. 
Meta believes that by investing now, they will get a much bigger slice of the pie and not be as reliant on revenues from advertising in the future. Could all this be vaporware and never amount to anything? Yeah, absolutely. But that might not matter as much as you think. So I told you all these numbers about Meta's revenues and margins and all that fun stuff. But what you really want to know is what this means for the average investor in Meta. So let's talk about it. As we discussed earlier, Meta has seen its value decrease due to its current market environment, margins falling, and the uncertainty around the company's metaverse strategies. This substantial decrease has brought the company's current market valuation to $460 billion, giving it a price to equity ratio of 22 and a PS ratio of 2.74. This is a bargain for a technology company with potential growth in the digital advertising market when compared to its current competition and historical trends. Here's a graph of Meta's P.E. ratio over the last couple of years, and as you can see, it has continually become a better and better deal. In addition, Alphabet, Google and YouTube's parent company, has a P.E. ratio, to be fair, of a little bit lower of 20.4, and a P.S. ratio significantly higher of 4.05. And Apple has a much higher P.E. ratio of 25, and a P.S. ratio of 5.33. You can see that all these stocks are trading at lower P.E. and P.S. ratios right now than in the past because of recessionary fears, but Meta has been depressed much further than its competitors in both real and relative terms. Now you might be thinking, so what if Meta is cheaper than other companies? You wouldn't buy horse poop even if it were free. So being cheap doesn't necessarily mean it's a buy, right? And yeah, for it to be worthwhile, we need to think it will go up in the future. So will it? We know that online advertising spending will increase in the future. Right now, most companies have cut back on their advertisements as fears of a recession have been made in everyone's minds. But as inflation eases and we get through this recession, advertisers will start spending big again, and companies like Meta will profit from it. Projections say that ad spending will be nearly $876 billion in 2026 compared to $600 billion today. So if all this is equal, I think it's fair to say that even if Meta's Metaverse project fails miserably, we will likely see its stock rise as ad spending increases and the overall stock market recovers. In addition to this upward pressure, Meta has been pretty active in buying back its stock. They spent $28 billion buying back stock in 2022, and just announced that they would buy another $40 billion in 2023. This trend of continually buying back stock without taking on leverage is a really good sign to investors that the company has additional cash on hand that it can just splurge on giving money back to its shareholders. Even for the tech industry, which is traditionally under leveraged with an average debt to equity ratio in 2022 of 0.26, Meta still has a lower debt to equity ratio of 0.08. So does all this mean that Meta will reach its previous glory of $1.1 trillion in market cap? Uh, I don't know. But the fact that Meta has strong fundamentals, is making bank from its Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp ads, and has a low debt to equity ratio should hopefully put you at ease if you're looking at 50% losses in your Meta stock. Even though many of us think that Meta's push on virtual reality is just lighting cash on fire, there is the chance that Meta actually creates something revolutionary that changes how we interact with technology. Now, would I pile my life savings in a meta stock? No, absolutely not. I don't have the balls for that. I'll leave my investments in a diversified S&P 500 index fund, thank you very much. But I do see why some people made the argument that metaverse or not, the recent sell-off in meta has made it an undervalued stock. And for a long-term investor looking to buy and hold a position for years, meta could become a company that rewards that kind of patience. But what do you guys think? Do you think that Zuck's metaverse bet will ever pay off? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you guys are still here right now, that means you probably enjoyed this video. And if you like videos like this one, you'll probably like my other videos I've made, and you'll probably like the videos I continue to make. So hit that subscribe button as your subscription directly supports me and my effort to bring the world educational content on business and finance. And honestly, it really makes my day every single time someone subscribes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.